guys, welcome to the 30 paintings in 30 days project. So every day of this month, at least 30 days of this month, we are gonna create a little painting a day and we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna experiment mostly with watercolor and gouache and um, let's get to painting and I will see you at the end. Hey guys, welcome to painting number five in our 30 paintings in 30 days series. So as per usual, I'm going to probably be saying this in all 30 videos. You're going to get sick of hearing it, but I've got some watercolor paints out. I've got a little mixing plate. I've got a couple of white pens. I've got some brushes, some dirty water, and some inspiration photos. So let's get started. We're going to work here in this square, and I am going to start again with my half-inch flat. And I'm going to this time start with some buff titanium, which is this sort of off-white. Can you even see what I'm doing? Barely. Okay, so it's sort of this off-white ochre color. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, French ochre to it. Yeah, that works for me. And we're gonna just sort of m model that all over the page, grab some water. Brushes, paints, fabric, stitching supplies, all over the place on my desk. Cause you know, it's how we roll, right? So as per usual, as you all know, I like to do the background first before I um, do the foreground. Uh, I am blotting it with a rag to get not only get up the excess paint, but to give it some texture. Um, and I'm going to take, again, the same color. I'm going to put some suggestions of horizontal shapes. We're going to refine them in a minute, but I just want to put some suggestion of some horizontal color in this mixture that we've made. Okay, we're gonna, of course, give it a dry. Okay, we're gonna stay with a half inch flat for now and we're gonna go in with some more of the French ochre, only this time just the French ochre without mixing it. And the background paper is dry, so it's not gonna move too much unless I put more water. So now that I've got some pigment on there, I'm gonna take some water. I kind of wanna preserve the suggestion of some lines. Okay, that looks pretty good. I am going to go in with a slightly darker color, uh, slightly. I'm gonna go in with raw umber, which is more, way more brown. See, look how dark that is. Rinse my brush off. Now, if you get too much, um, you can just get a damp brush in and you can lift. You're gonna wanna have something to wipe on. Some colors will stain immediately and some won't. Um, usually the paint manufacturer has marked on the tube somewhere, um, at least on the better brands of paint, um, how much they stain. To be honest with you, I don't usually look. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just kind of like to play and see what happens. Okay. I'm gonna go in with, what color now? 
Um, I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to go in with um, a tiny one. I have a couple of really small brushes and I'm going to use the same uh, paint. I'm actually going to, let's dry this first. Okay. So we're going to go in with the same um, raw umber, uh, fairly concentrated raw umber. I haven't added a lot of water to it, so. And we're gonna try to draw a couple of straight lines. You know, we'll see how far I get with that. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my brush off and I'm gonna grab some more of that and just draw, um, draw paint. Some little sort of blobby shapes. I'm being inspired by a picture I actually um, took. There's a couple of pictures actually on this page. One is from the Venetian in Las Vegas, and another is from a venue that we used to go to concerts a lot in um, California. And they had these beautiful hanging giant overhead lanterns. So if it gives you any clue, that's what I'm inspired by. So we're gonna take a little bit of the yellow ochre, I think. And some of the brighter Hansa yellow and mix the two of those together. Okay, now go in with straight the brighter yellow straight. It's gonna mix with the mixture that we just made. That's totally fine. Okay, and here's a little trick. So I'm gonna go in while that's wet with some whiteout pen. And I'm gonna have my damp paintbrush really nearby. That didn't work because the that dried out. Let's get some. There we go. So what before the really quick before the white out pen <sighs> dries. I got white out pen crumbs on my paper. Okay, let's get those off. Okay, really quick while the white out pen is wet still. If you get in there with a damp brush, you can move it around and mix it with the paint that's on there. Of course, you can also do this with a little bit of white acrylic paint. And this is probably why my whiteout pens are always clogged because I'm always mixing them up with other things and using them on stuff that's not completely dry, just FYI. lately. My whiteout pen video from years ago has been getting a lot of interest and activity over on YouTube, which is kind of weird, but yeah, this is probably why they're always clogged. Okay, I'm gonna go back over some of those. with some of the yellow. Okay. Then we're gonna take, I think I'm gonna do this with my flat brush, but I'm gonna take some of the Prussian blue and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just mix it here with the buff color that was on here and then add some water Let's see. And 
and let's, while that's wet, let's go in with a little bit of a buff color. Okay, we're gonna give that a little bit of a dry. Okay, so now we're gonna take our whiteout pen I'm going to leave some of the marks. I'm going to take the, a wet paintbrush to some other parts of it. Now this is a um, Princeton Aqua Elite brush. It was fairly inexpensive. I usually don't um, I do have a couple of really expensive, super small brushes. This is a number one round. I don't use those on um, whiteout pen because it can clog it up. So I'm gonna take some more of our blue mixture. Just kind of help define our, sh define our shapes. The inspiration photo had these little lights in between up against a stone wall and these blue globe shapes. Again, as per usual, I'm just trying to be inspired by the photo. I'm not actually trying to um, copy it at all. Um, let's take a little bit of this. This is, what is this, the Indian yellow? And let's give it some good shadows with something really fun. Let's take the Daniel Smith Moon Glow, which is a dark gray purple. I'm barely touching my brush to the paper, just FYI. Okay, perfect. We're gonna dry it. Okay, you can't even really tell that that was purple. It just looks like a really dark color, which is fine. So we're gonna take the tape off. So these little paintings, again, and as, as I've said before, are great for doing, you know, getting back into the practice of doing something, whether you're doing little paintings or you're doing ATC cards or um, some other quick, easy daily practice. It gets you back into the habit of maybe doing an art or craft style that you've um, not done for a while. It's, it's, a good, it's a good habit to get into and it's good to... Um, um, also to try um, experiments with your mediums. I love it. So that's our painting for today. I hope you like it and I'll be right back. How was that for today's painting? I hope you enjoyed the process and um, if you want instruction on the painting, you need to be over on Patreon. They are going to get the talking version here on YouTube. You're just going to get the speed fruit through version. Sorry. Um, if you'd like to support the free content here on Facebook or in the, fa uh, here on Facebook, holy cow. If you'd like to support the free content here on YouTube or over in the Facebook art groups, I certainly would appreciate that. You can of course join Patreon. We do have YouTube membership here for a, a small fee. And, um, also I have an Etsy shop and I have, um, PayPal tip jar and all that stuff. So check out the video description. Relevant links will also be down there. And, uh, yeah, don't forget the most important things. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay creative, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Do share your work with me. I would love to see what you're doing. That's it for now. See you later. Bye, guys.